I'd like you to grab your lightest loop band and your foam roller. We're going to be doing a standing figure four stretch, engaging our upper back as well as opening up our outer hip. We're going to pin the foam roller with the forearms against the wall, facing the wall. We're going to pull out with the forearms on that band to engage our upper back. So the roller's about a little higher than chest height. Go ahead and cross your dominant leg over your non-dominant, sitting back into your figure four stretch. Once you're back, you're going to stretch your arms up, straightening at the elbows, and then bending at the elbows, pulling the roller back towards the chest. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, bending at the elbows. And try to stay low in your lower body. Try to just have the arms moving up and down. Do four of those and then take a break, switch sides. And our goal is to keep some lumbar extension. So lumbar extension is where you're not rounding your low back, but you're tipping it back. You're keeping your navel pulled in towards your spine. So if you haven't switched, go ahead and switch. Make sure the foot that's crossed, the toes are pointed and your hips are nice and square to the wall in front of you. You're lifting up on those muscles that stop your stream of pee. Keep alternating sides every four uh, times you do the arms up and down, switch sides. And see if each time you can pull your abs in a little deeper, you can keep lifting up on those muscles that stop your stream of pee and sit back a little further, accentuating the extension in the pelvis, countering that flexion that's, that's prevalent with your posture naturally. Waking up the outer hip, the glutes, the upper back as you pull out on that band, pushing down and out into the foam roller like you're trying to split it in half. We got another 30 seconds. Remember, just four times and then switch. If at any time you need to come down to all fours and take a cat and cow, please do that. It's a nice position to be in. In 20 seconds here, we're going to make our way down to all fours with our heaviest loop band. But see if you can dig into those outer hips with sway back posture, especially with osteoporosis. We want to build up that hip bone density and doing a lot of standing work with resistance is going to help. So let's now grab our heaviest loop band and bring it above our elbows and make our way onto all fours, our hands and our knees for some cat and cow. So the band around the upper arms is there to remind you that you should be not only pushing down into the hands, but pulling out. This allows you to find your shoulder blade anchor, more scapular stabilization. So arching as we, act, as we inhale, we arch and look up at the ceiling. We exhale, bracing our abs as we round the spine. Inhale, arch, cow position. Exhale, angry cat. Give me two more of those. Inhale, arching cow. Exhale, rounding angry cat. One more. Inhale, arch cow pose. Exhale, round angry cat. We're going to now step back into a plank pose, engaging our lower abdominals. If you have any low back issues, keep your legs hip distance apart. If you need to pad the knees and do a modified plank, that's fine as well. Let's breathe together. Inhale, pull your pelvis towards your heels, keeping your booty out of the air, nice and flat plank, low belly pulling in towards the spine. Exhale that air out, bracing the abdominals as if you're going to be punched in the gut. Inhale, exhale, tap the knees down for a little mini break. Good, look up, give me that cow position again, arching the spine. And come right back into your plank for four more breaths. Hold that plank. Pull the belly in towards the spine. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two. Inhale three. Exhale three. Last one. Inhale four. Exhale four. Tapping those knees back down. Take that band off your upper arms. Grab your three pound weight and your small anti-burst ball. You're going to come to sit and we're going to do some hinge back work and this is going to engage our abdominal wall, our hip flexors. What I'd like you to do is sit with the ball between the inner thighs, your knees are bent, your toes are flexed, your heels are digging into the floor. Try to tip your tailbone back to create some lumbar extension. Hold the weight on your chest with your elbows out to the side. Plug your shoulders down. 
So flat back as you hinge halfway back, exhale, hold it back, inhale one, breathe, exhale one, inhale two, exhale two, inhale back up to that tall spine, pelvis pulls down, exhale, hinging back, go a little farther, halfway back, go, 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 hold, inhale one, plug the shoulders down, exhale one, lift the chin, gaze a little higher than eye level, and next inhale, lift back up. Set the weight down for a second. Bring your hands to your shins. Arch your back, trying to tip your tailbone back. Arch, arch, arch. Hold it there. Inhale one. Breathe. Keep that tailbone back. Exhale one. Belly in tight. Inhale. And exhale. Pick up the weight. We've got two more sets. You've got this. Hinging back. Elbows out to the side. Shoulders plug down. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two, inhale back up to that tall spine, elbows point to the side, shoulders plug down, last one. Hinging back on your next exhale, inner thighs pull you back, hold it here, inhale laterally into the upper back. Exhale, belly in, lift up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee, inhale. Brace the abs, exhale, and inhale back up to that tall spine. Set the weight down, hold your shins, arch your back here like you were doing your all fours cat and cow. Tip your tailbone back. Breathe into that extension. Hold it here. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. Flex the toes. Inhale two. Exhale two. Drive the heels into the floor. Inhale. And exhale. Flipping back onto your hands and knees. We're coming into a forearm plank. Bring that heaviest loop band back around your upper arms. I want you to pull out on it, feeling the scapular stabilizers. And remember, the legs should be hip distance apart if you have back issues. So forearm plank is typically a little easier than regular plank on the joints, especially the elbow joints. So you can always modify it with the knees down. Make sure you pad the knees if you decide to do the knees down version. Step it back. Make sure the pelvis isn't higher than your upper back. Tip the pelvis down. Pull the low belly in towards the spine. Hold it here. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. We're going to four. Inhale two, brace those abs. Exhale two, pull out on that band. Inhale three. Exhale three, one more breath here. Inhale, tap the knees down, climb up onto hands and knees. Give me that cow position. Gaze up at the ceiling, arching the back. Look up, pull the low belly in. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two, two more breaths. Inhale three, push down and out into the mat with the arms. And on your next breath, climb down to your forearms. Final plank. You've got this. Four breaths. Keep the belly tight. Shoulders plugged down. Chin lifted. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. Inhale. Pelvis lengthens. Exhale. Inner thighs pull back. Inhale. Low belly is in. Exhale. Pelvic floor lifts in and up. And inhale. Lower those knees down. Great. From here, we're going to grab our heaviest TheraBand and Heaviest Loop Band. This is our black TheraBand and our gray loop band in the Uniquely Fit Kit. You want to put them together like a reformer strap, threading the loop band through the TheraBand. Come to your seated position. Bring the loop band around both feet with your legs together. So same seated position except we don't have the ball this time between the inner thighs. We have the loop band around both feet. Feet are flexed. Heels are digging into the floor. You're going to wrap the ends of the TheraBand around both hands, around the knuckles, with the thumbs on the outside. Sitting up tall, tip your tailbone back, hinge back, give me that halfway back, give me three rows. Rowing both arms in at the same time, and then back. Good. Keep the palms facing in towards one another, and they'll brush right by your rib cage. Good. And now back up to a tall spine. Inhale. Exhale. Hinge back. Three rows at the bottom. One. And two, keep those abs tight. And three, inhale back up to a tall spine. Good, two more sets. You've got this. Hinge back. Three rows, low belly tight. One, two, and three. Back up to that tall spine. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, hinge back. And give me those three rows. One, two, and three. Beautiful. Grab your foam roller. Place it under your upper back. And go ahead and support the head with the hands and just allow a little upper back extension to open up the top of your abdominal wall. The rectus abdominis fibers are tight. We just want a little release. So support your head because I don't want any falling. 
and then just arch your upper back over that roller. Hold it here. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one, going to four. Inhale two. The lower you go on the shoulder blades, the more intense. Exhale two. Inhale three. Exhale three. Inhale four. Exhale, brace your abs to come back up. Great job. We're moving into some back work. I'd like you to grab your three pound weight and a pillow for your head. It can be a yoga block. Your small anti-burst ball is very comfortable. I prefer that. Or um, you, can also, you can also support it with the bottom arm. Come into a fetal sideline position with your three pound weight. We're going to work on that external rotator cuff. You're going to pin your elbow to the side of the body. And on a four count, we're going to lift the forearm up. Make sure you keep a nice right angle. Here we go. Inhale, lift the forearm. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower it. Two, three, four. And the arm starts parallel to the floor. So make sure you're not lowering it so the weight is pointing towards the floor. So the beginning point is where the forearm is parallel to the floor. Good. Lift it up. Two, three, four. Four, lower it down. Two, three, four. The breath is inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Brace your abs. Make sure your low back, you've extended it a little. It's not rounding. One more. Take it up. Two, three, four. Lower it down. Two, three, four. Four, gently make your way to the other side. Take your time. No rushing. Make sure the head's nice and supported. Shoulders are plugged down. Fetal position, tailbone's back, elbows pinned. Don't let that hand start coming in towards the face. Remember, nice right angle with that arm. Keep the wrist nice and flat. This is going to make it an external rotator cuff exercise, not a wrist exercise. And slowly lower. Great. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Three more. Up. Two, three, four. And down. Two, three, four. Two more. Lift. Two, three, four. And lower. Two, three, four. Four, watch the wrist at the top. Don't flex it. Keep it flat. Great. Let's make our way onto all fours, our hands and knees. Now, if you have sensitive knees, you can always do this standing with your hands on a chair. And we are going to grab our three-pound weight. And we're going to be rowing that arm up right by the chest, the, similar to the rows we were doing seated, with the opposite leg extended behind us, held isometrically. So all fours position, rowing, here we go. We'll start with the weight in our dominant arm, opposite leg extended, point the toes of the leg that's lifted in the air. And now we row that arm up by the chest, two, three, four, take it down. Two, three, four, soft bend in the supporting elbow, lift the arm up, two, three, four, lower it down. Make sure the leg is a little higher than the butt muscles. So you're really lifting that leg up and you're using your low abs to do so. Take it up, two, three, keep the wrist flat, don't flex it. Two more, lift it up, two, three, four, lower it down, two, three, four, inhale, lift it up, two, three, four, exhale down, two, three, four. Okay, set that weight to the side, do a little cat-cow, arch your back, look up, Hold that position in your arch, your cow position. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one, sigh out that hard work. Inhale two, exhale two. One more breath here, inhale. And exhale, grab the weight, switching sides. Extending the opposite leg back. Remember to try to keep it higher than the booty. Soft bend in the supporting elbow. Slow tempo, inhale, lift. Two, three, four, exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Four more. Inhale. Two, three, four. And exhale. Two, three, four. Good. Inhale, lift the chin higher. Two, three, 
four, low belly tight, two, three, four, last two, inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, one more, inhale, two, three, four, and lower, two, three, four. We're going to come stand against the wall. We need our lightest TheraBand. That is our yellow TheraBand in the Uniquely Fit Kit, and we need our three-pound weight. We'll be doing wall cactuses with our back flesh against the wall. We'll stand on the TheraBand, holding the TheraBand in our non-dominant hand, holding the weight in our dominant hand. So both arms are loaded, one with a band, one with a weight. Both arms go into your cactus position. You stand on the end of the band with the same, same leg as the hand, same side hand holding it. Stand on the end. Make sure your upper back, mid back, low abs are in, mid back, upper back are flesh against the wall. Bring those arms into cactus. Arm that's holding the band, stay still. Arm that's weighted lifts up. And slowly lowers back down. Make sure your upper back is pressing into the wall. Really use your core. Breathe in. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Good. Lift. Find your imprint. Soften the sternum in towards the shoulder blades. Press the shoulder blades into the wall. Make sure the arm is straightening. It's not turning in towards the head. And lower down. Good. Inhale, lift. Two. Find that imprint. Make sure you're exhaling, either out the nose or out the mouth. Soften the sternum. No pushing the rib cage out. You got two more repetitions. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Slowly switch sides. Setting up on the other side, that isometric hold, make sure that that arm is stationary, not moving, stays in the cactus. You feel that resistance. Notice if one side is imprinting better than the other. See if you can soften where you're overworking, pull the belly in, and really think about pushing that upper back into the wall, smushing the wall with your upper back. Take the gaze up a little higher than eye level. You can close the eyes if that helps you relax your nervous system. You've got four more. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, pelvis pulls down in opposition to the weight going up. Exhale, pelvic floor muscles lift up as the weight lowers down. So feel those energy lines in the body. Give me two more. Using the breath. And after that final one, we're going to take these same props down to our foam roller. You're going to tie the TheraBand a quarter of the way into the roller. And then you are going to, once again, we'll start with the weight in your dominant hand. And the non-dominant hand will be loaded with that lightest TheraBand. You're going to be up on your knees on the roller. And you're going to have the ball between the inner thighs. We're going to be doing scaption. The arms look like this. They're right out in line with your chest. And we rise up on our knees. Notice that my toes are tucked under on the floor. That's really important for stability. You don't want to be balancing on your knees. So once you have tied that knot and you are set up, let's begin. I've loaded my dominant arm first with the weight, non-dominant with the band, wrapping around the knuckles, thumb on the outside. Both arms are going to lift up to three, four, hold at the top, inhale one, breathe, exhale one, inhale two, and exhale, lower the arms down again, lift them up, hold them up, inhale one, breathe, exhale one, plug the shoulders down, inhale two, exhale two, lower them down, two more, inhale, lift, hold, inhale, pull the belly in, exhale, and inhale, and exhale, lower them down. Last time on this side, lift them up. Palms are facing in, chin is lifted. Gaze is a little higher than eye level. Belly is always in. You're never pushing it out, which means you have to direct your inhales into the side body and upper back. Belly is firm. Go ahead and come off the roller slowly. Take your time. Place that ball back between the inner thighs. Switch sides. Toes are tucked down for security. Low belly is in. Bring those arms up to your V. 
Notice that the V is not a T. The arms aren't all the way out to the side, but it's also not a frontal raise where they're directly in line with your chest, somewhere in between that position. Wrists are slightly below the shoulders. Lower that down, take it back up. Two breath hold at the top. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale, lower the arms. Lift them up, hold. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale, lower and final set. Take it up, hold it up. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two. Lowering them down slowly, coming off the roller. Great job. We're moving into lower body work. I'd like you to find your way to a wall, facing the wall. Put both hands on the wall. Step your dominant leg back. Start with your legs hip distance apart. We're going to stretch out those calves. I want to get into the outer calf, your peroneal. So I want you to internally rotate the leg in the hip socket so you're pigeon-toed. And drive your pelvis forward, getting into that outer calf complex. Lift the chin up. Make sure you're never looking down here because that strains the neck. So you're always looking up eye level. Shoulders are down. Low belly is in. You keep using your exhales to push the pelvis forward to intensify the stretch. So as the pelvis goes forward, the heel drives towards the floor as well. Take the gaze up, soften it, focus on your breath. Now, if your non-dominant leg is back, go ahead and switch. If your dominant leg is back, keep it back. And remember, our dominant leg, if we are right-handed, is our left leg. If we are left-handed, it's our right leg. If you happen to have scoliosis and you're right-handed, your dominant leg is your right leg. And if and you're left, if you're left-handed, your dominant leg is your left leg, just for reference point. Um, but honestly, as long as you're stretching, whatever side you start with, you're still going to get the benefits. It's just important sometimes, let's go ahead and switch if you haven't, that you start with the dominant side because we like to hold flexibility a little longer on the dominant side. And also the muscle memory is better on the dominant side. So when you go to do strength work on your non-dominant side, it's easier to hook into the correct muscle patterns and movements when you've done your dominant side first. Okay, give me a, two more breaths here. Pressing the pelvis forward. Make sure you've internally rotated to get into those peroneals. You're breathing. Almost there. Inhale. And exhale. Next inhale, we'll step forward. So from here, I'd like you to grab your three pound weight and your lightest loop band. Your lightest loop band is gonna come around your ankles. It looks like this. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what it looks like. You are gonna keep it on. I do not have sway back posture, so this is not good for my body. So I'm gonna take the band off, but please keep it on if you wanna build that strength and you have sway back posture. So we've got the three pound weight. We're gonna stand by a wall just for safety purposes. I want one hand on the wall, and let's have the non-dominant hand on the wall and the dominant hand with the weight. Go ahead and lift your outside leg up to knee flexion in front of you. Tip your tailbone back. Make sure your low back isn't rounding. Now open that thigh out to the side, just a few inches to side knee flexion. See if you can point your toes without losing the band here and place the weight on the thigh to load it a little bit. Arch your upper back, get that thigh up as high as you can without rounding your low back. Hold it here. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two. Going to three. Inhale three. Exhale three and lower that leg down. Roll your shoulders back for five and four, three, two, one. Repeat, same side. Take it up. Start with knee flexion, open it out to the side, place the weight on it, point the toes, send your belly in towards the spine, take your gaze up higher than eye level, use your breath, don't lock out your standing knee, feel equal pressure between the bone of the big toe and the baby toe, keep breathing, inhale, and on your next exhale, lower that leg, roll the shoulder back, five, four, three, two, one, last set on this side, Take it up to knee flexion, open it out to side knee flexion, load the thigh, tip the tailbone back, supporting knees soft, point the toes, gaze a little higher than eye level, pull your shoulder blades together, inhale one, breathe, 
exhale one, inhale two, exhale two, inhale three, exhale three, and slowly lower that leg down, roll the shoulder back, two, three, four, and five, switching sides, turning around so that one hand is on the wall, bar, or counter. Holding on, keeping your gaze up higher than eye level, knee flexion to side knee flexion, loading the thigh. Hold it here. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale, pelvis pulls down. Exhale, low belly pulls in and up. Inhale, gaze is eye level. Exhale, shoulders plug down. Inhale and exhale, lower that thigh down. Roll the shoulders back. Two, three, four, five. Take it up to knee flexion slowly. Point the toes. Soften the gaze. Soften the supporting knee. Neutralize your pelvis. So no rounding, but no arching. Somewhere in between. Low belly in. Shoulders plugged down. Collarbone wide. On your next exhale, lower that leg down. Roll the shoulder back. Two, three, four, five. Final set. Take it up when you're ready. Open it out to the side, lift the chin, point the toes, inhale one, breathe, exhale one, inhale two, exhale two, inhale three, exhale three, lowering it down, roll the shoulder back, good work, so circle back, two, three, four, five, you'll take off this loop band, set the weight to the side, grab a chair, make sure the chair is appropriate for your height, if it's a little short, put a bolster on it to elevate your pelvis so your thigh drops below your pelvis. If it's too tall, put a yoga block or book under the front foot. Coming into a supported lunge to open up those hip flexors after that hard work. Just a quick release here. We'll be here four breaths on each side. So come into that lunge. It doesn't matter to me which side you start with. Outside arm can come up to shoulder flexion. Plug the shoulder down. You can do a mini, and I mean mini, little tiny bend to stretch deeper towards the chair. Don't go crazy. With osteoporosis, lateral flexion is not encouraged. I don't want you to go deep into a side bend, but just to intensify the stretch a little, minor little bend. Breathe here. Two more breaths. Inhale and exhale. One more. Inhale and exhale make sure that front foot is solidly planted on the ground heel toes push into it straighten that back leg all right slowly switch sides set up on the second side for that release so after this we're going to move into a squat series to work on your glute strength your glute max your glute min those central glutes we're going to incorporate some weight to really work on that back strength build bone density We'll be doing some shoulder presses with the palms facing in by the side of the body. We're going to place the anti-burst ball between the inner thighs for this work as well. Please do it by a wall just so that you have, you'll stand profile and have the wall close enough. Should you lose your balance, you can grab the wall. So grab your anti-burst ball and grab your three pound weight. Bring yourself profile by the wall. And we're going to begin a squat series. We're going to be doing two to one squats. That means we always go down on two legs, not on one leg. And I'm going to emphasize this because of your bone density. I want you to get better range of motion and I want you to build your bone density. We do not want to hurt your knees. So always go down on two, then you shift to one. Little anti-burst ball between the inner thighs. Here we go. One hand near the wall, one hand loaded with the weight. You're going to sit back into your squat, exhale back. Bring the weight to the shoulder, and you're going to shift over to the side with the weight, kicking the butt with the other heel. Holding at the bottom, give me a press up with the weight slowly. Inhale, two, three, four. Lower it down. Two, three, four. Lift it up. Two, three, four. Lower it down. Two, three, four. And up. Two, three, four. And down. Two, three, four. Stand up on that one leg and put the other shin down. Both hands on the shoulders. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, sit back deep into your squat. Let the inner thighs pull you back. Shift over to that one leg. Point the toes. So same side. And here we go with those presses. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, up. Two, three, four. Exhale, down. Two, three, four. Last one. Inhale. Two, three, four. And exhale. Two, three, four. 
four inhale stand up exhale switch sides now make sure you're using that ball to your advantage squeeze in on it you may lose it when you squeeze really tight that's okay pick it up put it back between the inner thighs it's there to keep your legs equidistant to keep your knees safe so once you've shifted over we've got our three presses at the bottom at a nice slow tempo four count this will help you build that strength once you've completed that stand up tall reset knees are micro bent at the top feel your pelvis pull down on your inhale belly in let the inner thighs pull you back don't go back on one leg go back on two legs for range of motion then shift over to one you've got your three presses keep your gaze up higher than eye level we're almost finished give me two more presses you've got this collarbone wide belly tight all right great job we're going to make our way over to the wall and bring our legs up the wall so i like to bring my yoga mat so that my back is supported by it this feels better on this hardwood floor than not so if you need to reposition your mat to bring your legs up the wall do so now when you bring the legs up the wall i just want you to take a moment to let your spine adjust to having the legs up i know those hamstrings are tight hands at your side you can bring one hand to the heart or both hands to the belly or arms into cactus whatever feels mo more restorative from here i want you to point your toes you're going to inhale and you're going to circle the feet in towards one another on your exhale circle the feet in two three four Tur turning them in towards the center line immediately so make sure they're not circling out we want to work on inversion to combat the supination that happens in your feet there's bow leggedness sometimes there's definitely supination in the feet and ankles with sway back posture so in an effort to not overuse that lateral chain we need to do some more inversion so pause on your inhales circle the feet inward on your exhales trying to point the toes at the same time you're circling the feet nice challenge here keep breathing you're doing great inhale and exhale good inhale exhale circle the feet in two three four good inhale one more time exhale circle the feet in two three four okay from here take about 10 15 seconds to slowly make your way off the wall we are going to grab our three pound weight and we're going to come into a side we're going to come into a actually keep the three pound weight to the side go ahead and grab your your heaviest band your heaviest loop band and bring it around your upper elbows and make your way into a forearm plank we're going to do some knee taps for our low abs so in your forearm plank remember you can always have the knees down the whole time and just isometrically hold but i want you to tap the knees down and pick them up so legs hip distance apart if you have back issues together if you do not inhale lift the knees up exhale tap them down inhale lift the knees up exhale tap them down inhale lift them up exhale tap them down give me four more inhale lift exhale tap inhale lift exhale tap two more inhale and exhale lower down for a second climb back up to your cat and cow arch the back gaze up hold it here inhale one breathe exhale one going to three inhale two exhale two inhale three exhale three climb back down into that forearm plank final set here knees tap down knees lift up exhale the knees down inhale them up exhale tap them down inhale lift them up and exhale tap them down inhale lift them up climb up onto all fours 
Arch the back, pull out on that band, push down and out into the hands, pull the low belly in towards the spine, hold, inhale one, breathe. Exhale one, inhale two, exhale two. Inhale three, exhale three, making your way back up to stand. You'll need your lightest loop band around your ankles. And again, I do not have sway back posture, so look, I have it around my ankles. You're going to keep it around your ankles. I'm taking it off. You're keeping it on. Grab your three pound weight as well. Please do this by a wall for safety purposes. We're going to be stepping towards the wall and the frontal plane. So this is just a side to side unilateral step, holding the weight in the same hand that's closest to the wall. It doesn't matter to me which side you start on. You're going to step towards the wall and you're going to bring the outside leg into knee flexion. And let's hold it in forward knee flexion. And we're going to take that weight overhead, slowly pressing it up and lowering it down slowly as we did before. Inhale, lift it up. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower it down. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift it up. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower it down. Two, three. Four, step away from the wall, repeat that side, traveling towards the wall. Knee flexion, point the toes if you can without losing the band. Lowering and lifting in that shoulder press. Good, three sets, and then we'll switch sides. Make sure you're not locking out in your supporting knee. Go ahead and switch sides. And breathe as you're working here. Inhale, find the balance first, tip the tailbone back, pull the low belly in, outside hand to the hip, behind the head, or it can do the same arm movement as the loaded arm is doing. Whatever feels best. Pull your shoulder blades together. Think about your chest reaching for your upper back. So you're softening the sternum and you're using your upper back muscles to stay lifted. Point the toes, soft bend in the supporting knee, weight in the bone of your big toe. You got one more. And one, beautiful. Grab your heaviest TheraBand. Take all the other props and set them to the side. With your heaviest TheraBand, I want you to hold it with your dominant arm first and throw it behind your back. So your arm will look like this as you throw that band behind your back. Grab it with the other hand and try to walk the bottom arm towards the top arm, leaning your head back into the top arm. Breathe here. Now let's Let's go ahead and stand with our feet hip distance apart. You're going to cross your the same leg as your top arm, the high arm behind the other one, like in a curtsy position. Bend your knees, push your pelvis forward, and then a subtle side bend away from your top arm just to open up the tricep head and side body. Don't do a deep bend, just a nice small little bend leaning the head back. Bend the knees, push the pelvis forward, and if you're having any trouble with the balance of this, go by a wall for safety purposes. Keep the low belly tight. Hold it here. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. If the neck is straining, come back to center and stay center. Inhale two. Exhale two. Push the pelvis forward. Bend the knees. Inhale three. Exhale three. Switching sides slowly. Deep stretch. Opening up the hip flexors again after that balance work. Opening up the tricep head. And that lats and side body and the upper fibers of your external obliques. So remember, whatever arm is on top, it's that same leg that crosses back. The pelvis drives forward. And the subtle side bend is away from the arm that's on top. Lean the head back into the forearm, tricep head, wherever it lands. Just make sure the head stays centered. Neck isn't straining. Gaze is a little higher than eye level. Two more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Set that band to the side. Good. Bring your back against the wall. Bring your arms down by your sides, palms facing forward. Wall angels. Inhale, sliding the arms up as far as you can, keeping a micro bend in the elbows as the arms go up. Try to imprint the upper back as you're working here. And then exhale those arms back down slowly. 
The goal is to press them heavy into the wall, the upper back, the mid back, the head. There'll be a mouse hole between your low back and the wall. Belly is always in. These should feel good. This is a great thing to do after a day behind the computer. Just give me one more of those just to open up those shoulders even more. Open up the chest. Moving at a nice slow tempo for safety. Great job. We're moving into our standing series, um, our squat standing series with the transverse plane. So you're going to need your you're going to need your lightest TheraBand, and that is our yellow band in the Uniquely Fit kit. Please stand by a wall, bar, or counter for safety purposes. Hold the band, the end of the band, in the outside arm. So you're standing profile to the wall. And I want you to step on the end of the band with the same, on the same side. And then take one hand to the wall. And then cross your inside foot over the outside legs to your, into your figure four position. And you're going to take that loaded arm with the band overhead into your shoulder press. Sit back. Stick your tailbone back. Hold it here. Three breaths. Inhale one. Breathe. Exhale one. Point the toes. Inhale two. Exhale two. Inhale three. Good. Exhale three. And stand back up. Good. Keep the arm up in your shoulder press and just turn your head right and left. Right and left. Soft bend in the knees. Right. And left, bring the hand back to the wall, keep the arm up, cross the foot over, second set, sit back, hold it back, inhale one, breathe, exhale one, brace the abs, inhale two, exhale two, inhale three, exhale three, standing up, keep the arm up, uncross the legs, soft bend in the knees, turn the head right and left, right and left, shoulders plug down, belly in tight, and left, right. And left, slowly switch sides. Set up on the other side. So the figure four is one of the most important stretches for your posture to get into that outer hip. Make sure you're not aggravating the knee. So you, the only way you can keep that knee safe is to point the toes of the foot that crosses over to make sure the foot is above the knee and to make sure the abs are engaged. Okay, so belly in and hold at the bottom. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. Inhale two. Exhale two. Inhale three, exhale three, uncross, take the feet both to the floor, soft bend in the knees, arm overhead, turn the head right and left, right and left, two more right and left and right and left. Arm presses overhead, final set here, crossing that foot over, sitting back, point the toes, pull the low belly in, hold, inhale one, breathe, tip the tailbone back, exhale one. Inhale two. Imagine your upper back puffing up to the wall behind you. Exhale two. Inhale three. And exhale. Standing up. Arm stays up. Turn the head right. Don't lock your knees. And left. Right. And left. Two more. Right. And left. And right. And left. We're going to keep this TheraBand and grab our three pound weight. Coming over to the wall. Our arms are going to look like this. You're going to wrap the band around one hand. Hold the weight in your dominant hand. Wrap the band around your non-dominant hand. Arms come into a diamond shape. Stand on the end of the band with the same on the same side you're, as you're holding. And so take the, the band side right here above the head. And the other arm is going to be in the same position. But you're going to pull it down the wall all the way to the side of the body. So it mimics a lap pull down. And back up. Take at least four counts to go down. Down, two, three, four. Inhale, up, two, three, four. Exhale, down, two, three, four. Inhale, lift, two, three, four. Keep that going. Down, two, three, four. And lift, two, three, four. Press that upper back into the wall. Down. Soft bend in the knees. Make sure your feet aren't turned out because that's bad for the knees. So the feet are parallel. Soft micro bend in the knees. Switch sides. Other side. Now if you're noticing the rib cage really sprang forward, do your best to soften those ribs downward and inward towards your shoulder blades. Press the shoulder blades into the wall. Ideally, if you can find a mirror to do this in front of, 
you can notice the elevation of one of the shoulders. So typically we have one that's way weaker than the other and it's going to want to elevate. You got to press it down actively. So you'll know which one that is. Your non-dominant side, you need a little more activation pressing the shoulder down. As you pull down, hear that breath. Exhale lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Two more. Exhale. Two, three, four. And lift. Two, three, four. Last one. Down. Two, three, four. Bring it up. Two, three, four. Four. We're now going to move in the transverse plane. This is where 90% of injuries occur. And with osteoporosis, this is imperative that you do these exercises and you do them daily to prevent an injury like breaking a hip by turning. So I want you to hold your three pound weight. You can set the band to the side. Stand facing me by a wall, bar, or counter about a foot in front of it so that when you take a quarter turn, you have space to stand profile by the wall. So hold the weight in whatever hand you want to start with, but whatever hand you're holding it, that's the direction you're turning. That's the direction you're doing the quarter turn onto that leg. The other leg's going to come into your figure four. We were just practicing. So hold that weight at your shoulder, just like you were doing when we did the band work. Sit back. Once you're back, give me three presses up with that weight and lower it down slowly. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Four, turn back to face me and repeat that same side one more time. The balance when you step into it is important. Don't put that foot down. Bring it up immediately and find stability. Lift up, two, three, four, and down, two, three, four. Inhale, lift, two, three, four. Exhale, lower, two, sit back, use those abs. Inhale, point the toes and exhale. Good. Switch sides. If you're feeling pressure on the knee, you've got to pull the abs in. You've got to stick the tailbone back. Use your inner thighs to sit back deeper. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale. And it might feel nice for the arm that's not loaded to do the same movement so that you get more extension in your low back by having both arms overhead. So play around with the outside arm and where it feels best. And you have one more set. Turn back to face me. Make this one count. Step immediately to balance on that one leg. Find it. Take your focus up higher than eye level. Press up. Two, three, four. Lower down. Two, three, four. Plug those shoulders down. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. You're doing great. Take it up. Two, three, four. And down. Two, three, four. We're going to move into some flexibility. Grab your trigger ball. Now I'd like you to pin it into the flesh of the butt cheeks. I don't want you rolling your hip. That would be not so good. So we can all find a pocket of tissue around our glute area, outer hip. This is the area we're rolling. This is the area we've been stretching with all our figure fours today. Get into those knots, circular motion to dig into that fascia. We'll be here for about 30 seconds just to find knots. And then I want you to go to the other side. And then we're going to do a posterior delt release. The posterior delts can be found near that tricep head and that ridge right here on the outside of the arm. And we'll do this against the wall as well so we don't have to go to the floor. Again, going for fascia, tissue, not for bone. Go ahead and switch sides, switch butt cheeks. Get into the other side. And dig in, don't get on the bone, stay on that tissue. And you'll have to bend your knees as you dig in, circular motions. Keep the abs braced though, don't check out with your abdomen. Good, another 10 seconds here. And then we're going to switch to that divot between the tricep and that posterior delt, and we're going to get into that fascia. Start with your dominant arm. Now, I, I see a lot of people cringing with this one. This one is a very intense one. So be gentle at first. Your arm is going to retract and protract, get into that fascia. If you're working on a computer, if you're doing any um, sort of work that has you forward leaning, like cooking or typing, this, this area is going to be tender. So dig in, let's get rid of those knots so that they don't aggravate other parts of the body like the neck. Breathe here. You're doing great. 
Dig in. Couple more seconds. And switch sides. Now, if you go to the other side and there aren't any knots because you were on your dominant side and it was a lot more intense, you can go right back to that dominant side and just focus on that. Got 30 seconds here. Do what's going to be best for your body. Breathe into it. Use this time as a self-massage. Massage really is something that people should get frequently. And you can, you know, if, if money is an issue, you can do it for yourself using a foam roller and trigger ball. You should prioritize that because this helps you relax your nervous system. It helps dissipate knots that can cause chronic pain. So check out our deep flexibility if you're experiencing chronic pain due to tight muscles. Keep going. Breathe into that. Great job. We're moving into our final standing series, lunges and balance work in the sagittal plane. For our lunges today, I'd like you to bring your heaviest loop band around your outer thighs. This is our gray loop band in the Uniquely Fit Kit. This is going to help you not track too far with the knees, keeping the knees safe, keeping your form as great as it can be until we improve muscle imbalances. Grab your three-pound weight. And you can hold it in your dominant arm to start. Actually, hold it in your non-dominant arm. I think that would actually be better for this exercise. So hold it in the non-dominant arm. You're going to hold it up by your shoulder. Stand by a wall for safety purposes. Bring the other hand to the hip, and you can grab the wall if you need it. You're going to step the leg back that does not have not on the side with the weight. So the opposite leg back into a lunge, reverse lunge. Hold that lunge, pressing that arm overhead three times. Working on that scapular stability, keeping the shoulder plugged down. After you've done three, you'll inhale to step forward. Keeping the knees soft. Same side. Exhale, step that leg back. Get as much range of motion as you can. Squaring the pelvis, pulling the abs, and keeping the gaze up higher than eye level. We're just loading that arm, working the shoulder, working the glutes here. You'll feel the hamstrings with the band there. And that's good. Those are already strong. It's more about the glutes now. Step forward. Turn around. Switch sides. Second side. Rest the weight on your shoulder. And then give me those presses. Pull the low belly in towards the spine. Roll the shoulders back. Outside hand can go to the hip. It can do the same motion without being loaded. It can rest behind the head. And the head can rest into it like it's in a hammock. A lot of different options with that outside arm. Do what feels best. Focus on your form here. And last time, step it back. Make sure the bone of your big toe, especially on your front foot, is heavy. Tend to roll out. That's why we got this band here to keep you from going crazy into a deep lunge that could aggravate your knees as you're building your strength. And step forward on your next inhale. We're going to keep the three-pound weight. You can lose the band around your outer thighs. Moving in the sagittal plane by a wall, bar, or counter for safety purposes. So this is traveling forward and backwards. Hold the weight in your outside hand. You're going to step onto the foot, not on the side with the weight. Actually, I was wrong. Step onto the foot um, with the, on the weighted side and kick the other foot to your butt into a hamstring curl. Coming into dancer's pose, you're going to grab that foot with the hand closest to the wall. Point the toes, and we're going to take that front arm forward into scaption. We were working on this before. Holding that arm out, we're going to lower and lift that arm on a four count. Lower it down. Two, three, four. Lift it up. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Take that leg that's lifted down. We're going to step backwards through space onto the same standing leg and kick the booty with the same foot. Grab it. Dancer's pose again. Let that thigh drive back. Get that nice stretch for the quadricep. Point the toes. Arm goes up. Two, three, four. Lowers down. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. One more. Inhale. Two, three, four. Lower. Exhale. Two, three three, four, switching sides. Final step to balance. Find that balance. Challenge yourself to step through space as far as you can. Grabbing that foot. 
Now you can always grab a loop band or TheraBand or towel to capture the foot if you're not able to reach it. But typically the quadriceps aren't so tight with sway back to where you can't grab the foot. So hold that arm out in line with the chest and let's lower it down. Two, three, four, lift it up. Two, three, four, lower down. Two, three, plug the shoulders down, lift. Two, three, four, last one. Keep the gaze up soft, higher than eye level. Okay, both feet together, stepping backwards through space onto that outside leg. Kick the booty with the inside leg. Find dancer's pose. Start with the arm. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Inhale, lift. Two, three, four. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four. Final one. Inhale. Two, three, four. And exhale. Two, three, four. Great. We're going to come to foam roll our quadriceps on the ground, getting into those thighs. Go ahead and take your heaviest loop band around your upper arms, pulling out on that band to engage your scapular stabilizers. Do not collapse into the shoulders. Use your low belly, rolling the tops of your thighs. Please do not roll your knees. So the band goes around your upper arms above your elbows, forearm plank, rolling out the tops of our thighs. Getting into that tissue. We'll be here for a minute. Walking forward and back. Walking forward and back. Go ahead, breathe into that. Take it forward and back. Couple more forward and back. And one more forward and back. Good. From here, I'd like you to come to lie supine. You're going to need your heaviest loop band and your heaviest TheraBand. And if you'd like a pillow for your head, you could do a yoga block, a cushion, or your anti-burst ball. The anti-burst ball is going to put your head a little high. So if you have a cushion or a block um, with osteoporosis, that would probably be more advisable. So lying all the way down on your back, you're going to bring your dominant leg the loop band around it, holding the end of your TheraBand in both hands for leverage. We're going to get into that IT band. We'll also get into the calf one last time after all that hard work balancing. Stretch your opposite leg out or keep the foot down with the knee pointing up to the ceiling. I want you to internally rotate the legs subtly from the top of the hip socket. Getting into that outer hip, hold it here. We'll be here for a minute. I want you to make sure you're breathing. Use that breath. Inhale. Make sure your low back isn't rounding. Take one hand under the low back. Feel that mouse hole between the floor and the low back. Plug your shoulders down. Use your breath. Now is the time to really dorsiflex the foot. Squeeze the front of the quadricep to lift the kneecap. Getting into that outer hip. You've done a lot of good work. You can bend and straighten the knee, keeping it active. If it feels too much on the joints to just hold the stretch, you got another 20 seconds. So hear that breath. Keep on breathing. Almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower that leg, switching sides. Setting up on the second side. Brace your abs. Watch out for the pelvis moving into flexion. And what is flexion? It's when you round your low back. We want to avoid that, especially when your leg's up in the air. So take one hand under the low back at all times to check that position. Keep your low back safe. Tip it down. Neutralize it. That's that position between rounding and arching. 30 seconds more here. Inversion of the leg from the hip socket, which is subtle internal rotation, taking it across, getting into the lateral hamstring, squeeze the front of your thigh, your quadricep, lift the kneecap, opening up that outer hip even more. Breathing here, inhale, 15 seconds to go, and exhale. Doing great, 10 more seconds, hang in there. Make it active if you're straining. So bend the knee on your exhale, straighten it on your inhale. Flex the foot hard. Squeeze the front of the thigh. Okay, slowly make your way out of that position. And I want you to take your anti-burst ball. 
and your foam roller and come to lie supine on the foam roller for one final stretch. Now, if you're nervous about doing this, you can do this standing against the wall. So nervous meaning you're afraid of falling and your bone density is very, very um, bad. But for the most part, you're super close to the floor here. And I just want you to lie down and, and just rock your whole body side to side with your hands on the floor to feel to feel your stability. Um, the ball can go between the inner thighs, rock side to side, find center on the roller, let your spine adjust to it, brace your abs, make sure your legs, your feet are down. And once you feel stable, soften your sternum and bring your arms into cactus for our final stretch. Good. Relax your facial muscles, close your eyes. Inhale, gently press the arms overhead. So like you're taking a top hat off. And exhale, bend the elbows and bring them back in. Inhale, press the arms overhead. Puddle the heart in. Imagine those shoulder blades wrapping around the roller, pinching the roller. Inhale, press the arms overhead. Exhale, pull them back in. And last time, inhale, press them overhead. And exhale, bring them in. Flutter the eyes open. Bring your hands to the floor on both sides. Slowly lean to one side to come off. Take your time. Be careful. Great job.